Savas YouTube, we are going to have a little sneak peek today into Hungarian politics and history. Normally the vlog is not going to be too political, but since our elections are coming, I figured we might as well just take a look on this very important event that changed European history. So let's sum up the end of Hungarian communism, the 1989 system change. Right on! What system change am I talking about? Quickly, Hungary started the 20th century in a positive mood and with lots of opportunities. We were members of a large empire called Austria-Hungary and despite political turmoils and an ethnically seriously divided society, industry was rocketing and we were pretty well off. Then two last wars happened, you know the two main ones, the big ones with humiliating results. Nazis came and went, and in 1947, after a hideous communist takeover with the big help of the Soviet Red Army, this country was put in custody for a good four decades. In 1956, Hungarians had an attempt to win freedom, to finally get uh, away from the Soviet oppression. This was the 1956 revolution, which was put down brutally by the Red Army. And our uh, revolutionary Prime Minister Imre Nagy and several others, thousands of others of Hungarians actually were executed or simply murdered on the streets of Hungary. This system is going to change in 1989 and 1990 after our first free elections. Please note these are going to be only the highlights. If you want to dig deeper there are great books written on the topic. I'm going to mention them down in the description section. In the late 80s, the whole global situation was very promising. The Soviets, under a new leadership represented by Mikhail Gorbachev, were having struggles to modernize the country and keep the Union together. Countries like Hungary, Czechoslovakia or Poland are uh, opening up debates about their independence. Diplomatic conversations between the East and the West are being dusted off, so in 1989, Hungary, during a gathering called the Pan-European Picnic, they're opening up the borders to Austria, which many consider to be the last nail in the coffin of the Soviet Union. So the 80s in Hungary were relatively soft, especially towards the end of the decade. There are new political voices rising, here are the main ones. 1987 September, MDF, Magyar Demokrata Forum, the Hungarian Democratic Forum, the first one to form since the 1956 anti-communist revolution. Nationalist liberals, Christian democrats, conservative party of the people, very much not communist. 1988, March, Fidesz, Fiatal Demokraták Szövetsége, Alliance of Young Democrats, young, green and liberal energetic and radical. 1988, again November, SDS, Szabad Demokraták Szövetsége, Alliance of Free Democrats, a nearly 10 years old movement, an anti-communist but lefty movement now evolving into a party. They're trying to put down the tracks of the new left-wing Hungarian liberalism. Also in November, FKGP, and I need my help here, Független Kisgazda Földmunkás és Polgári Párt, independent smallholders, agrarian workers and civic party is formed again. They are actually an old party, first formed in 1930, reformed in 1956 and again in 1988. Conservative, rural and protectionist. 1989, September, this is going to be the last one, KDMP, Keresztény Demokrata Néppárt, Christian Democratic People's Party. I think the name explains it all. They're very Christian, they're very not communistic, and they're going to be also an old but reformed party. And so with these later too, there's an old new voice of Hungarian politics, the early 20th century's Christian, rural, conservative voice, which was a taboo during the communism. There are also other forces, but we're not going to talk about them today because they are not that important as these ones. So you see, within two years, from having one party, we'll have lots of others popping up and they will all question the legitimacy of the monoparty system. Meanwhile, something extraordinary happens. In May 1988, Janos Kádár, the head of the party and of the country since 1956, 
a real political dinosaur. The person who clashed, down, clashed the 1956 revolution is going to be forced to resign. This is the end of an era not only of Hungarian, but also of global politics. However, the country and the party is going to remain in the hands of one person called Károly Gross. There is going to be an attempt to reorganize the party, their slogan is going to be reform, and there's a new government with Prime Minister Miklós Német, who is very open to lead this country to a drastic constitutional reform. 1989. In January, Imre Pozsgai, a high member of the party and also of the government, calls the 1956 revolution a justifiable rise of the nation, contradicting the previous official opinion that simply labeled it as an illegal turmoil of reactionary fascist mobs. 15th of March. On the 1848 Revolution's Memorial Day, approximately 100,000 people marches up to the Sabacak Square in front of the headquarters of the TV. I repeat, the TV, because there's only one in the country. The square is packed. Amongst many other things, they demand free press, freedom of speech and the dissolution of the State Office of Religious Affairs. June. Foreign Ministers Alois Mock of Austria and Jula Horn of Hungary are taking down the Iron Curtain with their own bare hands at the borders of the two countries, or not? Because according to Miklós Német, you remember, Prime Minister of the time, this was actually just a PR moment. They actually have to build up a couple of meters of the fence only for the photo shoot. That's clever, right? Meanwhile, the main Hungarian opposition of forces are having fiery debates about how to start the work. How to form a new state, what needs to be done, how to share power, how to organize the elections, technically how to start from scratch. 16th of June, the reburial of Imre Nagy and his fellow martyrs. This is a huge national funeral. The most iconic national martyr, former Prime Minister, was executed in 1958 and the person who signed his death sentence was Janos Kadar. Now this person is still the head of the party in 1989, although without real power. Huge crowd is starting to gather at the Hero Square in the morning just to walk with the coffins to the National Cemetery. By the way, this is Viktor Orban's big moment to rise to national fame, but we're going to talk about that in another video. After three weeks of this big event, on the 6th of July, the High Court overrules the 1958 sentence and acquit Nagy Imre and the others from their crimes. This very same day, Janos Kadar dies. Then the inevitable happened. October 10th, 1989, MSMP, Magyar Socialista Munkáspárt, Hungarian Socialist Workers' Party, the governing force of the country, the absolute power, the party, this bands. The new party formed is called MSP, simply leaving the word workers out of their name. They inherit the money of MSMP though. MSP, as a big chunk of MSMP, is for a lot of people at least a suspicious creature. No one's really sure whether they truly want the change or only trying to leave the sinking ship before time with huge benefits. So from this moment on the country has one main duty, is the push from dictatorship to democracy with the elections. But first we need the Republic. So finally, on the 23rd of 1989, the Revolution's Memorial Day, after long tactical war, first between the old party and the new parties, and then with only between the new parties, 3 minutes and 28 seconds after midday, Mátyás Szűrös, then Provisional President of the Republic, is going to announce the formation of the Third Hungarian Republic. Well, there were also two other republics in this century, but they're not that important for now. Big moment. The Kossuth Square in front of the Parliament is full. All TV devices of the country are turned on. After 40 years, this country once again is a republic and there are going to be free elections soon. Unbelievable. However, the country is deeply wounded. There's a national debt of over 20 billion dollars and that's the 1990 value. Many former party functionaries managed to slip into the newly formed parties, avoiding impeachment. The country is full of former voluntary communist agents, many of whose identities are still kept secret until today, 2018. 
Inflation is insane. There is a lot to do with this old new economical model of capitalism, with the recreation of public health care, army, education, ministries, juridical system, and on and on and on. This is a massive amount of responsibility. There is a lot of work to be done. Build up the Hungarian Republic once again and make it fit into the democratic puzzle of Europe. But the euphoria of 23rd of October 1989 is still pure, is still genuine, and there's nothing that can break it down, at least for this day. So this was a quick overview of the Hungarian 1989 system change. I hope you liked the video. If you did, stay tuned and please subscribe. There are going to be more about the upcoming elections. Then politics are going to be a bit aside, I promise. But if you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching. I was that Levy guy and see you next time.